Hey everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So breaking into a new hobby or learning new technology can be intimidating at times and sometimes you don't know where to start. And today what I wanted to share with you is my experience trying out uh, a CNC laser for the first time. Uh, you can see it there behind me on my workbench. So what I want to share with you in this video is kind of a beginner's perspective on setting up, building, and using a CNC laser for the first time and all of the pitfalls and challenges and surprises that I encountered along the way. So if this interests you, stick around. See how it turns out. I want to say a big thanks to Banggood for sponsoring this video. If through my video you do decide that you want to try to dip your toe in the waters of CNC laser or you think that this is a good product and you'd like to buy it, I will provide a link down in the description below that you can click and get your very own from banggood.com. So without any further ado, this is my review of the LX Maker A3 Pro. The packaging for this laser is nice and sturdy with a double walled cardboard box and custom cut foam for all the parts. Don't mind the holes on the cardboard. I have a couple of teething puppies that are putting holes in everything right now. At first glance, I can tell that high quality components are being used to construct this CNC laser. All of the aluminum profile has a protective film. The stepper motors are weighty and well machined. The circuit board and laser module also have a high quality feel to them. Here's what comes with the kit. Three stepper motors, some aluminum profile, laser cut acrylic frame parts, a power supply, some nicely sheathed wires with a wire loom, cog belts, a USB-C cable, the main board with a separate power board, the laser module, some protective glasses, the laser mounting plate, and a nice organizer containing all the small parts and fasteners for the build. The only documentation comes in the form of a thank you card which directs you to a wiki website. This site contains the assembly instructions for the CNC laser. I've built several 3D printer kits in the past and I thought this build was going to be a breeze. Well, it was much more challenging than I had expected. First, Removing the protective film from all the acrylic parts was tough. It doesn't help that I'm a nail biter, so I couldn't use my fingernails to get under the edge of the film. It took only about 8 minutes, but it seemed like forever. Next, the step-by-step -step instructions were only okay. They're the universal type that uses pictures only, and sometimes the camera angle was such that I couldn't tell exactly what orientation to place a motor, or how many screws were used in a particular step. I eventually figured it out, but it could have been a little more clear. What wasn't okay was the fact that a couple of times during the build, a step would be skipped completely, and I would be left scrolling through the whole procedure trying to deduce what I had missed. One step in particular is the attachment of the laser module mounting plate. I love the small parts organizer. It is such a step up from having to keep track of several small plastic bags full of tiny parts. Keep a metric ruler or tape handy because nothing is labeled and knowing screw length is important for a successful build. I also like how they provided extra parts in case one gets lost or broken. Toward the end of the build it becomes obvious that the instructions were made using a different version of the laser. So the assembly of the main board carrier and how it attaches to the frame will end up being different. But I figured out the best orientation through a bit of trial and error. It took me about 96 minutes to get everything put together, which kind of surprised me considering I've put together unassembled 3D printer kits in about half that time. However, even these kits tend to have the wheel assemblies pre-assembled, and this kit was broken down into about as many individual parts as possible. The poor assembly instructions definitely contributed to this time, 
and I'm sure there are plenty of how-to videos out there to help move the assembly process on a little quicker. The assembly instructions direct you to download the LXCAM software to be able to control the laser. Be aware, you won't be able to download the software without first having to register an account with their website. For the life of me, I couldn't get Chrome to download the software. I would click the link and then nothing. I actually had to switch to Microsoft Edge in order to be able to download the software. I'm not sure what that's about. Once installed, I had to attach my computer to the laser with the provided USB cable and then go into the device manager to find out what COM port the cable was using. Once I gathered that information, I could go into the software and tell it where to find the printer. This process was a little cumbersome and the provided instructions do not do a great job of explaining things. I had to go to the LXMaker forum to find a better description of the necessary steps to get the software to work. Focusing the laser is easy. Press the button on the top of the laser module to turn on the low power laser, then twist the focusing ring until the projected laser point comes into focus on whatever you are engraving. The provided glasses help you see whether or not the laser is in focus. I spent some time getting familiar with the LXCAM software, and once I felt ready, I decided to load and execute one of the files provided with the software. The process of laser engraving generates a lot of smoke, especially on wood, so be sure to use the laser in a well-ventilated area. It became apparent that this file was much bigger than I was expecting, so I stopped the program and looked for something a bit smaller. I settled for this small engraving of a Nintendo DS. As you can see, it did a good job engraving on a scrap of oak plywood. I tried the same file again with the travel speed turned up to 2000 millimeters per minute, or double the default speed. The results appeared to be identical and I'm not sure it actually sped anything up. Next I loaded one of my logo files onto the program. I set the size and speed and let it run. Besides the image being reversed, it turned out pretty well. After messing with some settings, including a reverse x-axis setting that doesn't appear to work, I figured the best way to get things to print in the correct orientation is to physically rotate the x-axis 180 degrees. I wish there was something in the assembly instructions that would guide you to install it correctly the first time around, or a note that lets you know that this is the remedy to the problem, but the end user is left to figure it out on their own. You have about a 50-50 chance of getting it right the first time. As you can see, the problem is now fixed. I spent a little more time playing with some settings and engraving logos and photos, and here are some of the things that I found. LXCAM software reads bitmap and JPEG files. I haven't found any other file format that works with it. I tried loading an SVG vector file, which theoretically would produce the smoothest results, but it wouldn't read the file. Anti-aliasing, or the use of grayscale to make edges of an image look smooth, can have negative effect on the quality of the engraving. My Southpaw Workshop logo used a lot of anti-aliasing in the JPEG format, and the end result appears to be blocky and pixelated. I have had a lot of fun learning how to build and use this CNC laser. This being my first experience with such a laser, I had a lot to learn. Here is what I like so far. Quality build materials and components. Everything looks and feels like it is high quality and the fit and finish was flawless. Easy setup. Besides the small issue with the reversed x-axis, once built the laser was ready to go with little to no adjustment. Here's what I didn't like. Assembly instructions. As is the case with many of these products, the assembly instructions were either too vague or even missing steps in places that made building the kit a bit challenging. Luckily there are many assembly videos online created by the community that are super helpful. The LXCAM software. I tried my best to make this software work for me, and indeed it does work, but it is cumbersome and rudimentary at best. The user interface is clunky, and it is severely limited in the types of files it can read. 
Luckily, the open source nature of these CNC lasers make this unit compatible with third-party software that is much more capable and user-friendly. Many options are available, like the free laser gerbil, to the comprehensive light burn software. I haven't even had a chance to try any third-party software yet, but I look forward to unlocking the capabilities of this machine. In conclusion, this is a very nice CNC laser kit that is built with high quality components. Once built, the laser works without much adjustment. The main drawback is the poorly implemented software, but that can be easily overlooked since there are several other better software options out there that will unlock the full potential of this machine. So as you can see, I did run into some challenges and surprises uh, as I tried my hand at building and operating a CNC laser. But for those of you that are DIY minded, I don't think any of the hurdles are so great that you wouldn't be able to overcome them. Uh, this particular piece of equipment I feel is very high quality and it's really only hamstrung by poor software. And like I said in my review, that really is a non-issue because there's so many great third-party software options out there that will allow you to unlock the full potential of this machine. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, go ahead and click that like button. And uh, if you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I upload fairly regularly and a lot of my stuff is DIY-centered content and also uh, product reviews. Um, thanks again everybody for watching. I will see you next time. Thank you.